Mum's working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Elena, and this is Riley, and this is our home, La Vagabond. <laughs> We've been sailing around the world for the last five years and have recently found ourselves with a stowaway. <laughs> Meet Lenny. Subscribe and welcome aboard. Welcome to St. Michael's in the Chesapeake Bay. The Chesapeake Bay has the longest coastline of any bay in North America. With its rich maritime history, picture postcard towns and endless creeks, coves and anchorages to discover, there are a few places that are nicer and easier to sail. The only downside is the brown water. We've been dying to go freediving, but honestly, you couldn't pay me $1,000 to go freediving in this murkiness. I can already feel the sandbar sharks stalking me, even when I'm looking over the side. No thanks. Anyway, we've got Riley's friend from boarding school on board who we're showing around the Chesapeake for a week. His name's David, you'll meet him in a sec. In this episode, we're going to be showing you St. Michael's and going for a sail. And there's also lots of cute shots of Lenny in this one for the girlfriends and grandmas who only started watching our show with their partners when Lenny came into the picture. We know you're out there. Enjoy. We're always trying to think of something real or interesting to say to you guys. So I thought I'd wrap up our last two months, three months, and for me personally on board, we knew it was going to be hard having Lenny on board. We've spoken before about sailing being a full-time job. You know, most people sailing around the world, that's all they do. Most people with a YouTube channel, that's all they do. And we were doing all of that, and then now we've got a kid. But we're just having so much fun, deriving such joy from accomplishing goals together. It's always been like that, but especially lately, when I look over, I'm sailing, and Elena's cooking and cleaning with Lenny in one arm, or editing and fending him off with one foot whilst doing something else. We've just built up such a respect. Like, our cups are so full. We know that each other has got nothing else to give, and it's just really satisfying. It's a symbiotic, very respectful, relationship which it doesn't always work like we obviously had some um, pretty tough times in the Bahamas etc that's gonna happen but really the last few months have just been such a wonderful time in our lives we're just really happy so yeah thought I'd point that out everywhere, clean yourself, and then I like to rinse myself off with the freezing cold water just to get the soap off, and then you have the yeah. warm water afterwards yeah. to like do a second rinse off, and Position. that's kind of it. So this right. is winter time and a refusal to start the starboard side engine to get hot water. You want a shower, David? Yeah. Yes, yes, I thought that was, you know, probably due, I didn't know what Because <laughs> 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 Neither did we. Yeah. <laughs> We're all going to have showers this morning. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, we have to heat up pots in winter because we don't have... A water heater. On, on the yeah. stove. Shower time. Boat life. Say good luck, Davey. Good luck. Thanks, Lenny. Good luck. Yay. David and I took Lenny into town to give Elena some time to catch up on some work. The town of St. Michael's was laid out in the 1770s, and you can really feel the history here. The town's earliest industry was shipbuilding. Their typical product was a fast schooner, a type later known as the Baltimore Clipper. These vessels were well adapted to evading blockades or outrunning pirates or foreign naval vessels at sea, and some were later used as private arm vessels carrying a letter of mark. Shipbuilding declined after the War of 1812, but an oyster industry revived the town a few decades later. In the early years of the 20th century, along came the crab meat craze. Nowadays, although fishing is still a huge part of people's lives here, it has been tourism that has been keeping the place truly pumping. In 2007, the town was named number 8 of the top 10 romantic escapes in the United States of America.
Mum's working. <laughs> He's asleep. Is there we put the kangaroos to sleep back in Australia? So I just figured that might work with the baby. Alright, well, we should put real? him in bed now. <laughs> no, it's not real. <laughs> no, you just woke him. Back to sleep, Bubba. You got me. I've been in America for too long. Good job, everyone. Fogs rolling in of the East River Bank Like a shrine <laughs> Oh mate <laughs> Mum's on the phone <laughs> Sometimes you have to hang out with Dad Hey, sorry about that I've been really busy lately, still working on my book and my swimwear line for you guys. Thanks so much for being patient. Stand up. To be honest, it all feels like a bit of a circus in juggling all the jobs and my hobbies at the same time, but at the end of the day, I get to say I'm truly doing what I love, and for that, I'm ridiculously grateful. Thank you. Riley's teaching Lenny survival backstroke on the ground. <laughs> And we're all catching up on work and kind of going a bit crazy. So we just need a um, bowl of water. Yeah. And then you just break this into the water and the, the seeds uh, get out of the bottom and the rest floats. So the seeds all, they all go to the bottom and then it's a little bit messy but it's the best way that I've found. My So good? Mom? Have some of this one, Lenny. Oh! Church bell, Hide the drink. <laughs> you just eat your apple, Lenny. I'm sure we get every bit of dirt. <laughs> very good. Very good. And up under here, it always gets very messy under the fridge. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs> What's he doing to you? Doing the mop game. So we have a little story to tell you guys. We're just going to stop you here for a sec tell that story. <laughs> we heard about a beach cleanup that was being organized by Corona and we really wanted to go. In two hours we'd collected a mountain of tires, children's toys, clothing, carpets and industrial waste that had just been dumped. And this is actually a dolphin sanctuary over here so everything that's left here, dumped here, washed up here can affect the dolphins over there. They saw some this morning and I missed out. We met some of the Corona crew down there and got talking with them and we learned a few things like for the past four years Corona and Parlay for the Oceans set a goal to protect 100 islands by 2020 which they did a year ahead of schedule. They did 214 cleanups in 2019 covering 9 million square metres of beach. After a few phone calls and emails we were so excited they actually asked us to join their team yeah. so cheers love. Cheers to that cheers and to yeah that. we'll be doing a few more in the future so Keep an eye on our Instagrams if yep. you'd like to get the most up-to-date information as to where we'll be doing them. Yeah. <laughs> Go again. Elena said oh, we have to one. do a kiss shot because people think we're not together. <laughs> we kiss frequently, just not. 
We don't perform. I don't think you guys are voyeurs, so you're probably not into it. We're moving spots. Riley's out here getting wet. I'm gonna wait inside. We're going six nautical miles. Obviously the weather's taken a turn for the worse. Where we were was a bit unprotected. There's no sun, so we've run low on batteries as well. I started the course on engine, I was like, let's just move. We're gonna run the engines anyway. So we're heading straight up into Y East River. Found a nice spot up over here, which looks a little bit more protected than some of the other places I've seen. So hopefully it's good. So what I'm gonna do is just slowly come in. There's like a ring of trees, which will protect us from the wind. The wind swings from the east around to the north tonight. And I'll show you this map here. It looks like a good place that we'll go and anchor. Hopefully it's really protected. I can see dead patches where it might be super calm, but it's hard to tell now how far in we'll be able to get, and I need to steer. This is stunning. It's pretty nice, eh? I could honestly go further up, but I'm worried about the tides. This is good. Drying the flying. Yeah, I'm drying the flying. Well, what a wonderful morning, Mr. Renton. Do you have anything to report? This guy over here has been a bit noisy, isn't he? Do you think he's getting oysters? He was getting oysters. There's a few ways you can do this, but it looks like this guy is dredging for them. Last year, Maryland and Virginia reported their best oyster harvests in three decades. This hasn't always been the case. The area was devastated with parasitic diseases that affected the previous generation of Chesapeake oysters, and some farmers thought that they really wouldn't live long enough to see a comeback. But there was an oyster geneticist who developed a kind of super oyster called a triploid. The species was superior in virtually all respects from its knack for building oyster reefs to its ability to outrun disease with its rapid growth. The aquaculture for this new species was legalised in 2009 and that's what you'd mostly find at a restaurant here today. This new species doesn't reproduce, so they put all their energy into growth. A wild diploid oyster, what this guy's probably fishing for, reaches market size in three years, growing about an inch a year. A triploid can get there in 18 months or less. Thought that was interesting, I hope I didn't bore you too much. Grab that one out and put it on deck here and then put this one that's crinkled on the floor where the other one is. We're gonna put up the code zero because we're gonna go downwind a bit and then upwind and then downwind and then upwind and it's about 10 knots. So this one will be maybe a little too much at times but it's nice calm water so we should be fine. This is a stunning little spot. It's beautiful, eh? Right? Yeah. Hear the birds singing. That's about it. <laughs> <sighs> the air is fresh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. 
Go, 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 go! Righto. Lenny has a habit of ripping his socks off. It's not a good habit to get in. You always have cold feet. <laughs> I can't find them. He's also hidden his socks. How's it looking, Cap? Good. Bowsy, yeah. can you please make this neat? The Adelaidean boys. Always wearing footy shorts. Shorts in the winter. You've actually got pants on today. I'm impressed. Yeah, I'm a new man. Shorter and shorter these days, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, his naps have only been lasting for like half an hour, two a day, that's it. And then he sleeps all through the night, which has been amazing, and he can self settle now. You're the best, Lenny. Yeah. We love you. You're the best. Chariots along we roll Riley's listening to sea shanties outside. Tell everyone how happy you are out of 10. 9.9, <laughs> I'd say. <laughs> 